The following edition of Connecticut Valley Views is made possible by Windsor Federal Savings, with offices in Windsor, Bloomfield, Granby, and East Windsor. Neighbors helping neighbors since 1936. Join me, Susan Regan, host of Connecticut Valley Views, the most widely watched interview program on Connecticut Public Access TV. Proof to the people is the byline, insight without bias, generating a 360 perspective. Our mission is to focus on topical subjects with thought-provoking interviews regarding municipal leadership, current affairs, educational and political topics, as well as key destination points in New England. And here is your host, Susan Regan. Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My guest is Margaret Sweetland Patricelli. She is currently president and CEO of Robert and Margaret Patricelli Family Foundation. You've been doing it since 1997. Margaret, it's a pleasure to have you here as a guest. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, our subject is philanthropy, and it's a subject that's normally associated with people who have great dispensable wealth, but it can also be mean giving, an act or a gift done for humanitarian purposes. I believe that Margaret represents both of those attributes and that is why we want to discuss several of those areas today. Mm -hmm. Now, Margaret, you received your Master's of Public Health while at UCLA, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And you, um, at what point did you determine that that was an area you wanted to be involved in? Well, Susan, it's interesting. Um, I absolutely agree with Tom Brokaw that men and women of our parents' age, survivors of the Great Depression, World War II, were our greatest generation. And my parents taught my brothers and sister and me, very young, you are your brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. I went to college where I was an art history major, and my parents said, hmm, what are you going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Then I met a woman who um, was in the Peace Corps in South America and went to the Yale School of Public Health. I'd never heard of public health, and that's where I went. And wow. I just, that's where I learned that health, or its absence, mm -hmm. is one of those rare issues that affects everyone on Earth, that's no true. matter what your income. True, and, and that is all the way from a very young baby all the way through till uh, an older age, so you're, you're right, it's a common denominator for everyone in the world. Now, in, in doing so, bef before you were Mrs. Patricelli, and in your former corporate life, you were in health planning at Harvard School of Public Health and the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, is that correct? How long were you there? Um, all told, between Harvard and um, the Massachusetts Health Department, five years. Five years. And then you were an executive at Connecticut General, which became Cigna Corporation in Bloomfield, Connecticut, in marketing and communications departments. Was, th was this actually a detour from the health department, or was it actually a continuum in its own right? How did that come about okay. that you took that position? I see it as a continuum um, that um, allowed my health care interest my heart's interest to flourish. Um, when I came to Connecticut General, I was interviewing and someone said, healthcare, what are you doing here? We don't have anything to do with healthcare. And I said, I beg your pardon, millions of claims dollars going through the healthcare system, you do have healthcare. And then I loved marketing and government relations mm -hmm. because I, it That's gets That's the bigger back, picture. Yeah, very much. Mm. Now, when you were there and, and you were in the department, did you get the opportunity to work fairly autonomously? Did you, did you make, it into, make the job into something other than where you started? What kinds of accomplishments do you think that you brought to the company or any changes you made? Well, I actually loved working with our sales force because they are where the rubber meets the road. And often the most creative ideas mm -hmm came from those men and women in sort of a grassroots, here's a problem that my customers or my community has. It's got a health focus, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not sure where to go with this. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a continuum. And then I also worked closely with people in the Cigna Foundation. Okay, so Cigna then, obviously being a corporation that it was, 
it was in the healthcare business and insurance coverage and so forth, but then it had a foundation. So where did those monies go? Was it primarily in certain areas for helping people here in the United States or was it international contributions? It was primarily national. I, in fact, I can't think of an international um, initiative. It may well have been an international company mm -hmm. that received it, but it was focused on a particularly well-defined need and ownership at the senior level. Mm -hmm. Your department that you were in, did it grow um, as far as numbers of people or reports to you? Did you feel that, you, now how long were you there? I was at Cigna just for 10 years. All right, so, so that's, so, so the first year you were there to the 10th year you were there, what changes did you see that you felt that you had brought to it and, and di did it grow? Mm -hmm. I think there was um, a growing interest in what can I do for my community. But even back then, and I left in 1987, there were areas of the country where their economies were shrinking drastically and, and people were, you know, they weren't necessarily um, keen on why are your dollars going to a project? Mm -hmm. We need jobs. And, mm -hmm. and that, that, of course, has, uh, mm -hmm. it, 20 years later, it's much more acute. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you were also in public affairs at Connecticut, mm -hmm. uh, where you created the Connecticut Foundation. Now, again, here you are moving along in your career, but it seems as every time that you land in a spot, you're creating foundations. Is it because your desire to want to see the job that you're doing go beyond the parameters of the actual workplace? Mm -hmm. is, is that is yes. your reason? Susan, I was not motivated to become the next um, senior vice president, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that held me back. Yeah. But I did have the flexibility to go out into the community based on work I was doing in Washington mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to get to know our neighbors um, in Connecticut. That meant people in mm -hmm. Connecticut and, mm -hmm. and the Springfield area mm -hmm. originally. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in this state, there are vast differences between yes. Fairfield County and much yes. of the rest of the state. Yes, yes. Well, that's often the dichotomy is, is that, unfortunately, the disparity between the rich and the poor, and oftentimes no middle ground. And it, why do you suppose it is, with all of the disposable income that, let's say, is coming from the southern part of the state, why is it there is a continual disparity, and I believe I have my numbers correctly right now. If you were to leave, live in West Hartford, I believe their mill rate, in which West Hartford is very well known for its very good educational system and so forth, and I think the mill rate's somewhere in the low 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and in Hartford, the mill rate is 74%. Mm -hmm. Now, given your experience with it and, and in the healthcare industry, why are the numbers so Despair, yes, mm -hmm. and acutely different, and remain that way despite the fact that those who have more have been trying to write, write the wheels on the wagon. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you talk about disparities not just in terms of taxation and so forth, but um, real disparities in hope. Um, we have some of the worst public schools in the country, not only in Connecticut. But Hartford it takes the blue ribbon for the worst performing public schools and contrast that to West Hartford mm -hmm. or certainly Simsbury, mm -hmm. Avon, Farmington, which are some of the top schools in the country. And I would say about um, the, the schools in the valley, more and more colleges, elite colleges or mm -hmm. any colleges, mm -hmm. are expecting those high school seniors that are their applicants to do community service. And that's one of the things that's, that are bringing people from the suburbs back into the city. Now, when you've established these foundations and you want to see this charity work con continued, do you have an outreach to young organizations to encourage them to become involved? Because we all know that those who are well-established in their careers, have companies, work for large corporations, 
they're well aware of the ability to, uh, of disposable income to contribute towards constructive enterprises. Are, is the next generation being made aware of this enough? Or do you think that more could be done to introduce young people at a younger age to start that contributory thought process? I think social media have tremendous value to spread the word. It, it's sort of the lifeblood of the millennium um, about what giving does, what it means to people. Um, and they see their peers on Facebook or, or mm -hmm. other YouTube, mm -hmm. um, and uh, those are very positive. Uh, but keeping someone involved or getting them involved, and often that means in um, very rudimentary ways, like going to the copier mm -hmm. or things mm -hmm. like this, that are not glamorous, mm -hmm. but are very, very important, especially for organizations that are just getting mm -hmm. their sea legs. Mm -hmm. 501c3 taxation is a must mm -hmm. for most philanthropists. Um, but there, there are other things that um, small organizations, when you're a small fish in a big mm -hmm. funders pool. Mm. It's the ones that have been there forever and ever. The and worker often, bees. Yeah, <laughs> and often have national affiliates like the Boys and Girls yes. Clubs, ones that are sort of traditional on mm -hmm. any local United Way mm -hmm. uh, roster. Mm -hmm. But I think establishing that in young people's minds that it's sort of better to give than receive. Absolutely. Um, is actually, and the wealth that you receive from that it are the results that you've contributed towards someone else's life and making it better. I think also, um, I mentioned social media. It can be very isolating. So being in touch with actual young men and women or mothers or, you know, this whole issue on sexual harassment mm -hmm. in professional sports mm -hmm. and colleges and so forth, um, that's an area where the kids come together and they find they are making a difference. Mm -hmm. They're a population pool that people have to mm -hmm. listen to. Now, there, there's another uh, woman that you know who started another foundation, if you will, or group. It's Mother's Day, if I got that right. Sure. Yeah. It's um, Eva Hausman, mm -hmm. a retired school teacher, and we got to know each other years ago as co-chairs of the Town of Simsbury Public Health Committee. She is, has a real fire in her belly about mm. social change and um, helping people who can't help themselves. She was really um, uh, so profoundly moved by the Nicholas Kristof Cheryl Houdin book, Half the Sky, that she, she said to her daughters, you must read this. And one of her daughters, who lives in Fairfield County, um, started something called the Mother's Day Movement. Mm -hmm. And um, Nicholas Kristof, in his Mother's Day column, says, let's not spend $3 billion a year on flowers, chocolates, greeting cards, restaurants, as we do on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Let's give it back. So those young women resulted in 135 thousand dollar contribution in one That's day. There are people who contribute dollars to these various organizations and so forth and there, it, we, we believe that it's the larger corporations, it's the wealthy individuals, or is it the many people giving their hundred dollars? Where does the real uh, money come from? Excellent question. Mm. Um, many people when they see the Melville Charitable Trust or the Packard, Hewlett Packard things that scroll by oh, on step and PBS. And yeah. and pictures. And those are fabulous organizations. But most people, and certainly not Bob mm. and I, although we are very fortunate, mm. um, um, can't relate at all. And I think the nonprofits have to do a better job of saying, your $100 or $50 dollar mm. contribution. Or anything you can yes, give. Yeah. makes a difference because not only the contribution to operating costs, but it spreads the organization's awareness among a lot of people. And people talk about it. I just gave two, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and it makes you feel good, mm. and that's great. And with regard to corporations and 
family foundations mm -hmm. and so forth. Yes, I mean, they, for estate planning, mm -hmm. many people advise um, families of means create a foundation. It's a win-win for It both is parts. a win-win. And um, one of the things that's very important for this organization, as it was with the Mother's Day movement, um, Newman's own, mm -hmm. which is located mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on Avon Mountain, right. and um, our own, because we were just so proud of um, Kennedy Odede, um, is that at that wonderful abbreviation, Emily, early money is like yeast. So if you can get in there and if the organizations can make it easy for um, someone to make a donation in any amount and follow up with an expression of thanks, mm -hmm. critically important. Um, it, it, it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. There are also, um, there's an organization called Dining for Women, and I belong to it here in the Farmington Valley. It was started by a woman in South Carolina who, on her own, decided, you know what, why don't girlfriends and I get together um, and pool money that we would have spent going out for dinner once in a month and figure out where we want to send mm -hmm. it. And it is now a national organization. See, there's another entrepreneurial way mm -hmm. of thinking about how can we give, mm -hmm. and not necessarily to the Red Cross, which is certainly a worthy cause, oh, but yes. starting it up in other directions that will benefit people of a different sector, mm -hmm. um, an area, a community, a group, perhaps a gender, if you will, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and where you can help out where other people might be kind of left off the bus mm -hmm. otherwise. So I think it's very worthwhile. Now, I think a lot of people also talk about philanthropy and organizations and corporations give a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It goes to these international countries where concern for the fact that the government <clears throat> pardon me, regimes are taking the money and uh, using it for their own causes, um, or they're putting money into it, and actually the cost of running the organization is the thing that's absorbing 85% and only 15%. I mean, is that true? Is that a concern people should have when they donate? What's that's, your experience been? That's a very worthy and important um, awareness point for givers or potential donors. There is an organization online called Charity Navigator. They are very, very well respected and they do the homework to find out is ah. the, is the um, does it have the proper IRS code? Mm -hmm. What is the difference between how much is spent on administration and often that's a gaping what does mm -hmm. that mean? And what actually is given out to people? Um, what kind of measurements and evaluation tools does the organization have? Now, this means that um, the small, gee, I want to do something mm -hmm. right here, starting in my mm -hmm. look, those are not going to go into the charity navigator evaluation pool until they're bigger. So it's a Mm -hmm. which comes first. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does set people thinking about how am I going to be sure that my dollars yes. are used well, the way I intended. Mm -hmm. So they're a benchmark, a gatekeeper, if you oh, will. Yes. And then they follow them probably over a period of time to mm -hmm. make sure that it remains as such, because mm -hmm. a lot of times it can start out with a very good profile and perhaps something may dissolve mm -hmm. you know, in an unworthy way. And that's one of the things I'm proud of for our family foundation. And I learned about it while doing foundation-related work at both Cigna and Kinetic Fair. Mm -hmm. So folks, uh, your viewers out there who plan on giving, you, you need to vet the cause that you're planning to give to. Mm -hmm. And so we will uh, provide that website for Great. people to follow. Um, now, you serve on the boards of Tufts University, Friedman School of Nutrition and Science and Policy, and, and locally, mm -hmm. friends, so the Simsbury Public Library, and uh, of course, Shining Hope for communities in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, Shining Hope, the, you got on this board because Wesleyan University paired you with Mr. Odede. Mm -hmm. So, 
Tell us about that story, because oh. he, he was a phenomenal graduate. Yes, yes. yes. And it's a long story, so I'll try yeah. to be brief. Okay, concise. Um, but it started, this is a young man um, in the uh, slum and circling Nairobi, Kenya, somewhere between one and a half million people live in an area the size of Central Park, but they don't know because the government refuses to say it exists. This young man, one of eight siblings by several dads, mm -hmm. um, and his wonderful mother, who told him to always hope, would walk two hours each day to go in to, in one example, a hotel to clean toilets and come back and um, <clears throat> the average annual income there is $400 or less. Um, and his, two of his sisters were pregnant before they were 17. Oh and, and he just felt this can't go on because if it goes on like this, it's, it's going to be terrible. So one day he spent $2, a huge savings amount for him, on a soccer ball, and he got a group of young men, gang members, mm -hmm. to start to play soccer, and he started saying, hey, my sisters have had some problems. Anybody else? And so getting the men mm -hmm. to spread the word mm -hmm. was very important. Um, there's, a there's a wonderful website that tells you the whole story, uh, but it started with a free school for girls, uh, expanded to a health clinic for women and girls. Gender violence is huge there, but also the number one killer of women um, in Kibera is um, uh, death at birth. I'm <laughs> plaguing and on having, the term. And having children. Yes, yes. yes. Childbirth. Childbirth. Yeah. Yes. And then if the mother dies within six months, the baby is dead too. Mm gender violence, nutrition, and so forth. And soon, the line on uh, to get into the clinic had men. Um, so this idea that, hey, these, our daughters, our sisters mm -hmm. are See, when confident. it gets close to home, that's a different story. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so the clinic, the school, a um, community center where um, women learn skills, mm -hmm. These bracelets mm -hmm. and my wedding rings mm -hmm. are the only things I never remove. Mm -hmm. These are made by HIV positive women mm. who are bringing income in. Women turn 75 cents of their dollars back into the family mm. compared to 35 cents mm. for men. Alcoholism mm. is, mm. is a huge problem. It's, it's overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we use the word hope, but there, mm -hmm. there is hope by, again, circling back to our foundations and the giving. So, mm -hmm. And what you've done is you've inspired people to help themselves. And mm -hmm. I think, truly, to help people to be inspired to help themselves is one of the greatest gifts you can give people. Absolutely. And one of the reasons why Shovco is so effective, and um, Billings Forge Community Works in um, Frog Hollow in Hartford, mm -hmm. one of the poorest, 10 poorest urban cens census tract. The parallel between these two is they are grassroots developed. Yes. And often it's the women. Yes. Um, and they identify what the needs are. They then figure out on a community basis um, how to address those needs and um, it just grows mm. beautifully. I think one of the reasons, uh, many times we'll say that it's women that do it, the women are very conscious of life and death. Mm -hmm. When they have children or they become pregnant, life is an, an internal force for them. Mm -hmm. And keeping the family together or protecting the family is a, is a vital thing. Mm -hmm. When they get the men to come on board, then obviously that's a good partnership. Mm -hmm. um, now, this um, he established the Shining Hope. Yes. And he did this along with uh, Jessica Posner. Yes. And uh, so they've worked together and continued. And now, how long has this been going on now? This is Since 2004. And 2004. Mm -hmm. All right. And 
this is something that we want to expand upon because he's giving these girls, these young women, this, this school that he has established for women, it's tuition free, mm -hmm. and they are now going to be able to leave a life or at least assist in leaving a life where they could have become trafficked or, as you said, pregnant too early, mm -hmm. and they are now going to hopefully have that opportunity to not only lift themselves up, but to educate and, and inform the mm -hmm. other young women mm -hmm. that surround them. Yes. So he is really spreading the wealth mm -hmm. in, in that fashion. Definitely. And um, uh, I will say, too, that an, an offset of the um, clinic, uh, not only health, but sanitation, mm -hmm. um, safe drinking water is a huge issue in Africa, and Newman's own <laughs> Paul Newman uh, would be uh, very pleased, uh, Newman's own CEO, Bob uh, Forrester said, because Newman's own provided latrines. Ah, yes. Not only, not yes. only dignity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but helps uh, control spread of uh, disease. Well, we're talking about today's Ebola. And exactly. this is spread by the fact mm -hmm. that people actually don't, let's be frank, don't mm -hmm. have a place to go to the bathroom. They go to the bathroom in the streets, mm -hmm. and then that spreads the disease. Mm -hmm. and, and so, therefore, anywhere, potable drinking water, any of the sanitary conditions. Mm -hmm. So now you see we've circled back to where you started out mm -hmm. with your health care, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's gone um, in a direction that expands beyond that, and mm -hmm. I think that's what's so important. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we talked about Shoko, and mm -hmm. we would like to... Um, uh, know more about Shining Hope, you can go to the website, which is www.shofco.org. Do I have it right, Margaret? You sure do. Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to thank you, Margaret, for giving us some background on yourself and the Patricelli Foundation um, and all of the good works that you've become involved with, both locally and on a national basis. I know you actually spent time over in Kenya, is that correct? Mm -hmm. You volunteered your time. Three times in the four years I was on the board. So, we, and at what time, what, how long were you there? When you went over, you stayed um, for how long? Two times uh, for a week. And um, the third time was for the opening of the, the construction of the water tower that a Newman's own made possible was so exciting. So it was a, a yellow ribbon ceremony. Mm. The ambassador of Kenya uh, came. So very, very exciting. Okay. Well, you've done some exciting things. And I think that, uh, as I've said before, it, it, it actually gives back to you. It's it quite does. evident in your face and Susan, your demeanor. At least three or four times a week, Bob and I are like this, mm. counting our blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul Newman talked a lot about luck in his life. Luck, very hard work, and being in the right place and knowing mm -hmm. the right people certainly figured in our lives mm -hmm. today. But I, I'd like to close with, we are such fortunate daughters. Mm -hmm. Our parents were just incredible example setters. And I think that's one of my goals in what mm -hmm. we do, is to be a role Set model and an example setter. Well, let's hope that we've uh, planted those seeds today. I want to thank you for your time. Very much appreciate it. Thank you, Susan. And I want to remind our viewers, you can see us on Facebook, and you can see us on our website at www.ctvalleyviews.com. And I also want to remind you that we have a new online publication, the CT Web, which will be a continuum of our programs, but it will also bring you an aggregate of all kinds of information with regards to trends, health industry, uh, government, politics, uh, neighborhood watch, things for people who are 50 and plus. So please check that out. And that is at uh, www.ctvveb.com. This is Susan Regan thanking you for joining me and bringing proof to the people. <music>